I hereby notify the holders of the within described property that at a public sale conducted on the ninth day of May, the property known as the Prentice Ranch was sold to the highest bidder, Ramsey McCall. The present holders are hereby notified to vacate, and it's signed by the sheriff. I never heard of the auction or the tax bill. They can't pull anything like this. I'm going to find out about it. Looks like he's riding toward town, McCall. He may try to start something. If he starts anything in my office, Sloan will take care of him. I promise you that. Gabby. The K is for Judge Kirby's brother. The R is for Rogers. That was my father. They were partners. Well, there ain't no reason why you should go traipsing off down there just when the Rodeo is getting started. Well, I kind of hate to disappoint you, Gabby, but Judge Kirby's in trouble. And if I didn't want to help one of the Kirby's after all they've done for me, I'd be ashamed to look at myself in the mirror. You've been looking. What you've seen must have been a Robin Hood or a Don Coyote or somebody that's always messing in other people's business. Oh, I've been wanting to go back down there anyway, see what the old place looks like. I know you too well for that. There's a woman or something. Well, there used to be. She was Judge Kirby's niece. They lived there on the ranch. Raven beauty, I suppose. No, she was a homely little old kid I got stuck on long about the time I was wearing my first long pants. I'm kind of curious to see what she looks like. I know there was a woman in Summers. Well, as long as you're so dead shot, I'm going. Suppose you just sum it up for me. It ain't just clear in my mind. There's a man named Prentice had his ranch bought out from under him for failing to pay an old tax bill. When his son went to protest, he was shot and wounded by a deputy named Bill Sloan. For some reason or other, Judge Kirby had Sloan go. Now the whole county's yelling for the judge's... See, as if the judge got that scalp treatment coming to him. You're wrong, Gabby. If the judge is in on any crooked deal, it isn't because he wants to be. You? Yeah. There's an awful lot of easy money around them rodeos. While you're winning some prizes, I could be back to the barn doing a little gambling, picking up all that soft money. Seems to me like the last time you had to borrow enough money to get home on. Oh, shucks. I was just giving them the come on till next year. Well, what do you say? You coming along? Who, me? <laughs> I should say not. Not with all them rodeo pigeons waiting around to get their wings clipped. <laughs> Hey, tell you what I'll do. We'll leave it to chance. Tails, I ride with you to your hometown. Heads, we take in the Rodale. What do you say, huh? Now, just a minute, Gabby. You know better than to try to fool me with this two-headed coin. Looks like they're going someplace to make something happen. Yeah. Eviction notice. We're taking over the ranch. I expected that, Mead, but you're not serving it. We're coming in.
think I hit him. Fight, Roy. Why isn't it? Four against one doesn't look fair to me. Nelson, stay here and take charge. Okay, Louie. If you get a good shot at him, let him have it. We'll drag him back here and say he was killed for resisting eviction. Come on. Try to run them all. Stranger, but you're sure mighty welcome. Them wolves just about had me quelled. Yeah, wolves is right. Deputy Sheriff's clothing. Is he with you? He sure is. Did you see the way he drove them wolves out of the pasture? <laughs> Say, you're wounded. We better get you to a doctor. I don't know what your double costing game is, but I don't want any of your help now or any other time. Oh, oh, you sure you want me to help you on your horse? Gratitude free. What do you ever do to him? Nothing as I know of. Who is he? Old man Prentice. Prentice? Yeah, what you just saw was probably the actual taking over of his ranch. What do we took you for? Well, I don't know, but the sooner we get started, the quicker we'll find out. How did you get in? I walked in. If you're so jumpy about visitors, you better keep your doors locked. I can't have you coming up here. You know how it is in a town like this. Everybody knows everything that goes on. Oh, yeah? Well, we're really going to give them something to talk about. Maybe you don't know it, but you're taking me to that dance tonight. Are you out of your mind? I can't be seen with a girl who's been running around with Bill Sloan. Do you mean you're putting on a front for this one-horse town? Don't make me laugh. Listen, Julie, I'm not taking you anywhere, get that? And you'll have to stay away from this office. That doesn't give me much of a break. You tell Bill to clear out, and I'm supposed to sit around here biting my nails. I just don't happen to be the type. That was the deal I made with the judge. Kirby didn't have enough to hold him on, but he didn't want him around. I don't care whose idea it was. The main thing is he's gone. What's all the excitement? Just a couple of the boys hurt, that's all. Phil and Eddie. We served those papers, and the old man put up a fight. Well, that takes care of Prentice on a felony charge. Prentice started the shooting, but somebody else fired the shots that hit him. 
I couldn't tell whether it's neighbors or friends of his. I'll still say it was Prentice. I'll get out a warrant. Looks like you're doing all right around here, Mac. What do you want that old fellow's ranch for? Going to start raising beef? It's not what's on top of that land, Julie. It's what's underneath it that counts. You mean a gold mine? Something like that. Mac, Louie, come here quick. Look who's back. Big as life and twice as handsome. Bill Sloan. I wonder who Whiskers is. I never saw him before. I told Sloan not to show up till I sent for him. Get him up here. I'll talk to him after I get this warrant over to the judge. Louis. Never mind about Sloan. I'll tell him. Okay. There'd be some good gambling going on in the back rooms of them buildings. Hey, them's my guarantee natural sevens. Yeah? The last time you sneaked them into a game, a fellow made 17 straight passes against you. I never brag, but my temperament's frightened, and I'm just a little bit wild. Don't you listen to him. I cut my teeth on a hunk of chain like that. I'm Mother Nature's problem child. It's a lie. It's a truth, so help me. It's, it's a lie. It's a fact, says I. He's a tall tale spinner and a first prize winner, and the thing he does best is lie. Says who? Says we. Get the truth. Says who? Says me. It's, it's a lie. lie. Oh, hen's teeth. I cleared the way through the Indian country. I made set bull stands. Don't you listen to it. I cut a club from a sycamore gum tree, then played tag with Geronimo's band. It's a lie. It's a truth, so help me. It's a lie. It's a fact, says I. He's a tall tail spinner and a first prize winner, and the thing he does best is lie. Says who? Says we. It's a truth. Says who? Says me. It's a lie. Oh, hogwaller. I led the troops at the Bunker Hill battle in the charge of the Light Brigade. Don't, Don't you listen to him. They shot my horse, but I took my saddle, and I finished on the back of a renegade. <laughs> hey, Gabby. Truth that must be Ann Kirby. It's a fact, says I. He's a tall tail spinner. Hold me to the brat, just like you said. Says who? Says we. It's a truth. Says who? Says me. It's a lie. Oh, blither. I'm quite a guy with the pretty gals also. That's just a part of my rap. Don't you listen to him. I got a way makes the pretty gals fall so pretty little gal. You better watch your step. It's a lie. It's a truth, so help me. It's a lie. It's a fact, says I. He's a tall tail spinner and the first prize winner. And the thing he does best is lie. Says who? Says we. It's a truth. Says who? Says me. And the thing he does best is lie. You are never coming back. Hey, wait a minute. Take it easy. Am I glad to see you. What's going on here? Where'd you pick up Santa Claus? He didn't pick me up either. What do you mean, Santa Claus? <laughs> this is Gabby Whitaker. I'm Julie Craig. Hiya, Pop. Say, so you know you got back just in time to take me to the dance tonight. Well, I'm sorry, Julie, but I have a lot of things... Oh, to... don't give me that. There's two beautiful girls over there selling tickets, and you're going to get them. Now, hurry back. Sure you ain't been back to this town for 10 years? Well, I'm beginning to wonder myself. That gal must think you're the same fella Prentice mistook you for. That spitting image of yours sure must be a fast worker with the women. Maybe that's a break for me. That's just a sample of what you'll hear tonight. Well, we can't. And two for me, Ann. Why did you come back here? You caused my uncle enough trouble. What do you mean? Here, Gwen, you take care of him. Wait a minute, Ann. That fella Sloan seems to be making a play for your girlfriend all of a sudden. enough you turning that gunman loose, but he's back here again. That's just another example of what's happened to law and order in this town. But Sloan isn't back. He can't be. He certainly is. I thought we'd seen the last of you. We've had enough of your kind of justice, Kirby. You better pack up and get out of office. I'm going to take this whole thing up for the governor. You're a little too sure of yourself, Sloan. I have no legal authority to make you stay out of town. But you'll find out I meant what I told you. Told me? Well, now, wait a minute. We better get this thing straightened out. The trouble you've caused can never be straightened out. But it might help a little if you'd stay just as far away as possible. That sounds plain enough to me. How about you? Well, 
I told you we ought to went to them rodeos. No wonder old man Prentice acted the way he did. Why don't you tell everybody who you are? If everybody thinks I'm Sloan, I'll be Sloan. That way I might be able to find out who's behind all this. Stag Nabbit, it's just like sticking your head in a noose, Roy. The name's Sloan. You let me take care of this, Ann. Sloan isn't your worry. I'll find some way to deal with him. We'll see you later, Judge. Mind if I come in, Judge? Got a warrant I want you to sign. You got the gall to come in here asking me to sign warrants when that gunman of yours is around town again? I saw Sloan right in a little while ago. But don't worry. He won't be here long. Well, he's done enough damage already. Prentice was in here complaining his head off. He threatens to take the whole case to the governor. The governor? That might make trouble for both of us. I guess you won't mind signing this warrant after all. It's for Jim Prentice. On a charge of attempted murder. Attempted murder? That's right. He shot and wounded two deputies when they tried to serve that eviction notice. Well, it's too bad he didn't kill them. I never should have signed that eviction order in the first place. You didn't have much choice in the matter. I've taken all I'm going to take from you, McCall. I stood by while Prentice Ranch was sold out under him. I shut my eyes when that gunman of yours put his son in the hospital without giving him a chance. You forced me to release Sloan on a trumped-up self-defense plea. Well, now I'm through. You take that warrant and get out. You'll sign that the same as you've signed all the others. Someday you're going up for blackmail, McCall. Well, what are they doing now? Selling tickets to charity dances in the courthouse? No. I didn't think they were. Here, you owe me for these. You're picking me up tonight, 8 o'clock. And try to be on time for a change. Darn persnickety female. You ain't taking her to the dance, are you? Why not? That'll give me a chance to ask a few questions and find out something. Uh, Roy? Uh, uh, Sloan, I mean. Ordinary women is bad enough, but that one's plumb dynamite. <laughs> From now on, you ain't getting out of my sight. I'm going to get a ticket myself. How about one of them tickets? Here you are. One dollar. Teddy, what to do? Match you for it. Double or nothing. Head, you give me a ticket. Tail to pay you two dollars. Fair enough. Hey, what are you doing? Tails. Two dollars, please. Well, of all the ding busted luck, letting a woman beat me to the draw. I'd say you were taking quite a chance. Somebody might step up that you didn't want to kiss. And just guessing, I'd say you wanted to spend all of this? Sure. Shoot the works, that's me. Anything for charity. Say, does this sign mean what it says? Of course. Let's see, I gotta give this a little thought. Uh, we'll make the first one uh, right about there. Anything you say, here, Mad, you take care of him. Well, wait a minute, where are you going? Sorry, my time's up. Don't you want your kisses? Oh, you better keep them. You might run out. Say, what's the big idea of palming me off on that bearded rascal? You mean Gabby? You heard me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. Comes now the big prize contest of the evening, the blind pie auction. <laughs> now, to most of you folks here in South Creek, this is more or less a tradition, but there are some newcomers amongst you, so I better explain a bit. Most of the ladies here tonight have brought along homemade pies to be auctioned off. Now, you men are going to bid on those pies. You're going to bid on them by numbers. You're not going to know who baked them or anything about them. But the winning bidder gets to share the pie with the lady what baked it. After which, and if you're able, of course, <laughs> you uh, dance the next dance with said lady. 
Now, if you're all ready, Pat Brady. Pat, come on up here. You didn't bake a pie, did you? Are you kidding? I didn't think you did. Pat's going to take over from here on out. And boys, if you'll play a little auctioneer music, I'm going out and see if I can't bid on the right pie for a change. Here we go, man. I can see your mouth of watering already. Number 10. What them all for? 75. Don't be pikers, man. Who say a dollar? Something tells me that this is a strawberry pie, baked by a strawberry blonde. Tantalizing, sweet as honey and full of spice. But don't get me wrong, boys, it's the pie I'm recommending, not the lady. <laughs> One dollar! <laughs> dollar and a quarter! Dollar and a quarter! Do I hear two dollars? Sold to Bert Cutler. <laughs> All right, here we go, man. A lot of pies over there. Nobody's picked a lemon yet. Number four, two dollars. Do I hear three? Three dollars. Make it four. How about you, Bob? Any bids? Four dollars is bid. Five dollars. Five and a half. Ten dollars. Ten dollars? Ten dollars going once? Going twice? Sold for ten dollars. <laughs> Number four, Miss Ann Kirby. Sloan must have pulled a fast one. Yes, he's going to be badly disappointed. I hope you like your own cooking. I can stand it if you can. I'd certainly like to know how you arranged this. Well, I didn't do anything. But I saw your friend Julie switch those numbers. Yes, but what you didn't see was the committee woman switching them back again. How will this do? All right, I guess. What's wrong with you? You don't act the same since you've been back. You don't even seem like Bill Sloan anymore. I guess I forgot myself. You bet you did. What do you think you're doing? Huh? Who? Me? Nothing. Then get out of here. Oh, good evening, Mr. Sloan. I didn't know you were back in town. Good evening. Don't you want your key? Oh, uh, yes, my key. I still have your old room, Mr. Sloan. Thanks. Now then, maybe we can settle this business about Ann Kirby. There isn't anything to settle. Oh, there isn't, huh? Well, let me tell you something. One more exhibition like you gave tonight, and I'll bust that Kirby set up wide open. I'll bet you can do it, too. Maybe I will. I'm looking out for myself, whether it's spoiled in the cause little hold over the judge or not. If I start talking, I can run that Kirby girl right out of town. Don't get the idea I don't know what's going on. Ann's father was a crook. Two years before he died, he walked off with a bundle of county funds. And Judge Kirby doesn't want any skeletons being rattled. One blast from me and the law moves in to take over the Kirby ranch. In case you don't know it, that means Ann Kirby will wind up on a fast train for oblivion. Do I make myself clear? I think I get the general idea. Well, it's the last time I'm going to tell you. Now, clear out of here before I start throwing furniture. All right, all right, I'm going. What's wrong with you? Don't you know the way to your own room? Well, I guess I'm a little absent-minded.
be. Well, who do you think it was? I had a hard enough time finding out which room you was in. <laughs> what are you looking for? Maybe you mind. What in the world do you expect to find here, anyway? That woman. You got her hit out summers. Well, you won't find her here. She's in her own room. You ain't being fair with yourself impersonating that fast working gunman. Suppose you find out. You'll end up under a cactus bush with a bullet in your back. Oh, well, maybe. But I'm beginning to find out where Judge Kirby stands. So that's what you were doing with Ann all evening, huh? Well, she doesn't seem to know much about it, but Julie does. There's a man by the name of McCall that's been blackmailing the judge. Blackmailing? How? He's got the judge thinking his brother stole some county funds, but I don't believe it. So we're saying, huh? Yeah. I'm riding out to the old ranch in the morning where the Kirby's first homestead. Might be worth a look around. <laughs> What's this for? Hey, Sloan. Didn't Julie Craig tell you to see McCall? No, why? We're going up there. He wants to talk to you. You took your own time getting up here. Well, I'm here now. What do you want? I want to know what you're doing back in town, that's all. Why don't you stay where you were until I sent for you? What's the difference? The judge turned me loose, didn't he? That was too raw. Even for this town, everybody's been yelling their heads off. And if that isn't bad enough, Prentice knows you're back. He's taking the whole case to the governor. And unless we can get to him first. I've been trying to locate him. Maybe this is it. Hello? Yes? Good. Where is he? Right. I'll take care of it. What a break for us. He was staying at the Belknap Ranch. Louie, this is a job for you and Eddie. Now, there's only one road that Prentice can possibly take. You've got the warrant for him. Louie, you know how to handle this. Just like it had already happened. Prentice was killed resisting arrest. Right. I'll get a move on. If it's money you came back for, this will be enough to take care of you. Now, get out of town and keep going. Notice anything about him? Why, what do you mean? Oh, nothing. Only I heard Julie say she didn't think he was Sloan. What are you trying to hand me? Well, anyway, she said he didn't act like he used to. Get out of here. Trying to get somewhere powerful fast. They're going after Prentice, and I've got to beat them to it. I'm going with you and keep you out of trouble.
All right, get him up. Who, me? What for? We're going down there, and you're riding in front of this gun. I'll explain on the way. Hurry up. Getting a little careless, aren't you? You almost had yourself a first-class witness. What's the idea, Sloan? I thought Whiskers was a friend of yours. Well, I picked him up on the road the other day. I guess he doesn't know enough to mind his own business. Wrap him, Garnish. Get a rope. Tie him up. <laughs> Careful there, mister. I'm a regular wildcat when I get riled. Sound like I come from over there. get these men to a doctor. Well, we'll take care of that. Don't take us into town. McCall's men are trying to kill Prentice. Well, let's see now. Yeah, we'll take you up to the line camp. Pat, go phone the doctor. And bring him up there. You're going along, too, just in case Prentice don't pull through. All right. Boys, pick up those men. Red-handed, trying to kill old man Prentice. Come on, get in there. Step lively now. Say, hey, Matt, you'd better get over to the jail in a hurry. That old timer who's been hanging around Bill Sloan just brought Ed and Louie in. Brought Ed and Louie in? Yes, tied up and with a gun on them. Judge Kirby, McCall, get over to the jail right away. I'll tell you when we get there. Right. I'll meet you out front. I ain't seen anybody as cold-blooded as them two since I was scouting for Custer. Well, howdy, Mr. McCall. Judge? I'll have you out in five minutes. And is this the public-spirited citizen who brought them in? That's me, mister. Sheriff, this is a positive outrage. Holding these deputies on a charge of this kind, why, well, you might as well dispense with law altogether. These men were merely carrying out their sworn duty. Prentice was a fugitive. Judge Kirby himself signed the warrant. Well, that's right. You have no authority to hold them, Sheriff. Why, any case against them would be thrown out of court. Well, if you say so, Judge. He certainly does say so. Open that cell and return their badges. You know, another mistake like this, and you'll be left right out of office. I, I guess I did overstep my bounds. Justice ain't only blind in this town, it's deep, too. Somebody ought to run you out of this town. Take a tip from me. You'd better not be seen hanging around town after dark. Yeah. Huh? But Judge! You mind telling me how that old geezer proceeded to make fools out of you? That is Sloan's idea, not mine. Sloan, what was he doing out there? Bringing that old guy up saying he was a witness against us. And Sloan stepped in front of him and that bird grabbed his guns. That don't sound like Sloan to me. Remember what I told you, boss? Why don't you ask Julie what she meant? How about that, Julie? Did you tell Sloan it seemed like he was somebody else? Maybe, but I didn't mean anything by it. Just what did you mean by it? Well, he don't act natural. For instance, he never gave the Kirby dame a tumble before. Now he's all over the place after her, neglecting me. Anything else? He didn't seem to know the way to his room in the hotel. There's only one way we can be sure about all this.
This is where Sloan's supposed to be hiding out. There's no way of reaching him by phone or wire. You'll have to take your car and get back as soon as possible. Oh, Mac, that's a long way. Get going. Prentice has probably been picked up by now, but we've got to find him. Get everybody together and start searching. That means every ranch in the valley. And keep looking until you find him. That means you, too. That doctor. You know, George, I've been doing a lot of thinking all the way up here. We've got to start squaring things for Prentice. I'm with you, Bob. And most of the other ranchers feel the same way about it. The law doesn't seem to do anything about McCall and his gunmen, so we got to take things in our own hands. I say we get the ranchers together and run McCall and his whole bunch out of town. Yes, and while we're about it, we'll get rid of Judge Kirby. The judge might have made a bad mistake, but Anna's certainly innocent. If you make a move against McCall, she'll lose her ranch and everything she owns. You're lying. You're just stalling for time trying to save McCall's neck. But it won't work. Time up. for town. Go get the ranchers. hands up. What are you doing in this house? I've been looking for something and I just found it. What is it? It's a receipt from the county treasurer proving that your father paid back the money he's been accused of stealing. 
Are you telling me that anyone would dare say my father did anything dishonest? That's what McCall's been holding over your uncle. That receipt will break his hold. You mean it would have been impossible to prove my father was innocent after you turned this over to McCall? I wasn't going to turn it over to him. I'm not Sloan. I'm Roy Rogers, and I've got to have that. You, Roy Rogers. I don't believe it. I tell you, I am Roy. Can I make you understand? I've got to have that proof to stop a lot of useless shooting. Nolan's out right now calling all the ranchers to write against McCall and the judge. Stop walking toward that door. I'm taking you to Bob Nolan. We'll never stop him that way. You're the only one that can do it. Start walking, I said. There must be some way I can convince you. That used to be your father's room in there, and, and on through there was the kitchen. We used to have an old cook by the name of uh, Williams. Shorty, they used to call him. You remember that old song he taught us? And there's his old guitar over there on the wall, right behind you. As they seem to say, remember me. Listen to the songs they sing of some far distant day. Remember me. Echoes fading, falling. Still I hear them call. those ranches were? They'll probably meet at the line shack. You better get there as quick as you can. I'll ride back to town for a showdown. You can't. Why not? I was sent here to stop you. I guess I'd better say Bill Sloan sent me so you'll know who I mean. We're not taking orders from him. But he isn't Sloan. He's Roy Rogers. He used to live at our ranch. He's on his way into town now, and he's promised to settle the whole trouble without a shot being fired. I'm sorry, Ann, but it's pretty obvious that you're trying to save your uncle. Maybe you believe him, but we don't. I tell you, he is Roy Rogers. I know he is. Suppose you're right. There's still no reason he can't be Sloan, too. That's right. You can't tell me the two men could look that much alike. I guess that we'll find your friend Rogers and McCall together. Let's get started. Judge, take a look at this. This proves my brother repaid the money he was supposed to have stolen. Where'd you get this, Sloan? I'm not Sloan. My name's Roy Rogers. You mean Tom Rogers' son? Yeah, I'll explain that later. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, we're going over to see McCall, and you're going to get Prentice's ranch back for him. Can't get over there too soon to suit me. You better let me take that. What do you want? A quick claim to the Prentice Ranch. What is this, a joke? Does this look like we're joking? Just who are you, anyway? Roy Rogers, if it makes any difference. 
Get busy on that quit claim. And, uh... Be sure you make the wording legal. I know a few things about the law, too. Come here. Who's that old bird? He's a friend of that guy who's been using your name. Where'd you get that shiner? Skip it. You see what they've done? Made a fugitive out of me. We gotta get out of this town pronto. Yeah? I turned them two deputies over to the sheriff, like you said, but that lawyer talked them out of jail. Now they're gunning for me. Well, we'll take care of that. Come on. Where are we going? You'll find out. There it is, but it won't stand in court. We'll take a chance on that. Just sign it. Hey, Roy, that sounds like you. That'll stand in court, all right. fighting beside McCall. They got somebody cornered. Wait a minute, Ann. I had to kill your friend Sloan, or Rogers, whatever you want to call him. You killed him? Nice shooting, mister. Thanks. 
shucks. Anybody knows Roy as well as I do wouldn't be fooled for a minute. I know who he was all the time. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is one of the most difficult decisions I've ever been called upon to make. We need you here, Judge. And we want you to stay. We aren't overlooking the fact that with this one exception, you've made about the finest record of any judge this county has ever had. I'll back that up. Any man's entitled to make one mistake, and you made yours trying to protect Dan. I'm not blaming you, and I'm not a man to hold grudges. Every trail I ride with you is a blue sky avenue. Faithful pal of mine, by the campfire's fading light, you're beside me through the night. After the rodeos are over, I'm going to come back and try to talk you into a new Kirby and Rogers partnership. Sounds like a good idea. Right. The prairie moon that shines out yonder will light our way wherever we roam. No matter where we chance to wander, it will be our home, sweet home. Till the last long trail we ride, out beyond the great divide, we'll ride side by side, faithful pal of mine.